Hi, I'm here today with Stuart Sims, who's Chief Executive at FitsMe, and FitsMe is pioneering in the fashion tech space, particularly around data analytics. And we're here today to talk about the future of fashion retail. So FitsMe believes that current online shopping, the model is slightly broken. And can you just perhaps explain, Stuart, why you think this is? Yeah. So I think all aspects of um, clothing shopping could be improved at the moment. And I think there's certain aspects that are really broken. Um, if I think about when I, let's say I go for shopping for a blue shirt and I search online. Um, if I go into a major um, brand, I could be presented with over 200 results when I'm looking for that yeah. particular um, item. I'll then be asked to kind of qualify what size I am, what collar size I want, what cut of uh, shirt I like, maybe what kind of um, uh, collar and cuffs or accessories that I might wa want with that. That might limit it to about 20 to 30 results. I then get that down to maybe six or seven that I really like, only to find that they're not in stock. So. When we say it's broken, we think that what if we put the consumer at the heart of um, the experience and then made sure whenever they're presented with new results on, and when they're searching for new products and services that that's tied to their preferences, their size um, and the information that they're happy to provide. Sure. And do you think anyone's doing that right now? Is anyone getting it right in that area? I think there's a lot of companies that are really starting to understand personalization which is quite a key topic in, in retail in general. And they start to profile and present from the moment you touch their website. And they're also starting to look at some interesting areas like psychometric questions as well. So I, I've been on um, certain brands which will ask you about what holidays do you like, what music do you like. And that's really to start to get an idea of what kind of person are you and how can they present more relevant information and potentially start to change that user experience. Sure. And I guess with online retail, it's very different to the offline retail experience. So is, is there any way online retail can compete with that in-store experience? See, I, I think they're very complementary. And I think the retailers and brands that are really getting this right see it as a seamless customer experience. Um, quite often, you'll see that um, the, the, the brands are trying to extend some of the core values and, and um, services that they offer in-store and present those online. We work with a, a company called Maasai, which is a, a, a very um, popular Nordic fashion brand. They had a very specific way of selling uh, to their target audience and their, their customers. They created great long time, um, lifetime value with those clients, um, and those, those customers have shopped with them for many years. Uh, they were very selective about what tools could they use on the website that really mimicked a lot of the in-store experience that they were trying to provide, and uh, we helped them make that transition. Sure. And... Um you're, you, you're called FitsMe, so you're, you're looking at the whole fit, the area of fit. So, um, do you think brands are approaching fit in the right way? Uh, it often, is it just about, do you think they're doing enough around size and taking into account consumers' body shape and aspects like that? Yeah, so I, I think um, in, in some ways they do. They, they conduct a lot of uh, consumer research and studies that help them formulate their sizing strategy and also their grading rules for their garments. Um, but I come from a very tech, tech background. Um, and uh, the way that I've seen products developed in the tech world, maybe not relating to fashion, is that they take huge amounts of, of data on the customers and the feedback from the customers and then feed that into their, their product development process. I haven't seen a similar approach in fashion yet where consumer insight and consumer data is being used in a meaningful way to then understand how they should be sizing, grading, or styling garments. And I think that's the, the, the real uh, revolution that's happening in the fashion industry that we're part of. So historically, why don't you think that's happened up until now? I think the day, A, um, it's, it's both a kind of cultural and also a technological, um, te technological challenge. Mm. So on the cultural side, um, the, the e-com business might not necessarily have been working very closely with the product or with the back office operations. Or from a technology point of view, that data has been siloed. So maybe the consumer data that they are capturing sits within the e-commerce business and is not necessarily shared with the, uh, with, with the product guys. I think that is really changing. We're starting to see that really develop with our customers and also with our prospects. Sure. And whenever data comes into play, People are often worried, aren't they, when data's mentioned, you've got a whole privacy issues and things like that. So is that something you come across with clients? How do they approach the whole 
asking customers to share lots of data with them. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we, we regularly get asked the question by prospects and customers, look, are consumers really willing and able to share that data that you're asking them for? Yeah. Um, are they happy to give you high age and weight? And the answer is um, always yes, they are. But they expect some kind of value in return. So there has to be a value exchange between the retailer and the consumer. So the more data the consumer gets, the more personalized experience and the more relevant the, um, the experience should be for them, both in store and online. And I think that's the area that I would really like to see retailers focus on, and we can help. Yeah. And do you think consumers are getting more comfortable with sharing data? Absolutely. If I look at the um, millennial generation, for an example, um, we did a study with a major high street retailer, um, and 80% of the people were uh, between the ages of um, 25 to 35 were absolutely happy to be able to share their data as, as long as they get some kind of value in return as a consequence. Sure. And what about if you're approaching perhaps an older, someone who's not a millennial, is there, is there anything you can do to change mindsets around that, do you think? Yes. Um, we, we do a lot of work with um, uh, brands that target middle-aged women mm. um, in particular. And uh, we've had a lot of success. But what I would say is you have to, again, think about the person that you're engaging with and ask them questions in a pertinent way. So we spend a lot of time and effort developing a user experience that really gets them to give us that data and understand the value of giving it to us. What, what type of questions do you think retailers should be asking in terms of in encouraging their customers to, to shop with them and feel comfortable with the whole shopping experience? Again, it, I don't think it's kind of what kind of questions. If I were them, I'd be thinking what kind of um, value can I offer consumers and therefore what do I need to ask them for to be able to give, you, give them that, that kind of value. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, something that's incredibly useful to uh, brands is to understand more about the demographics that are by and the, the shoppers, the consumers, to bring them to life, um, uh, to allow them to make sure that either they're stocking the right amount of uh, clothing in the right sizes, or that they're having the right si styles available to them, or that they're um, able to um, uh, have a, a kind of uh, the latest season is going to meet the needs of that particular base. There's huge amounts of data available to retailers today that they don't utilize that's currently available to them both in store and online. Yeah, and is there anything you can do? Obviously, online it's presumably a lot easier to gather this data, but what about the in-store shopping experience, can you link up the data between in-store and online? Like how, how is there, have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, we're, we're, um, it, that's a really interesting area for us at the moment. We're getting more and more um, brands and retailers asking us to help them in-store as well as online. They see that some of the tools we've developed online where you're working almost blindly with the consumer to, to get them to give you some, some data and is going to be far more relevant in-store. In and particularly in making sure that where they've invested in, say, a flagship store that has a relatively complex product range, where they've got a really um, highly trained sales force, they're looking at technology like ours to help them then mimic that, perhaps in their wholesale business, as well as online. So the brand then can provide a very consistent consumer experience across all channels. Okay, so you don't think it will always just be limited to the flagship store, it is actually possible to roll it out to the whole store estate? Well, uh, go beyond that. I think they're going to be looking at how they can roll it out across all channels to provide yeah. a very seamless uh, way of engaging consumers. We've, we've seen um, and, and demonstrated lots of tests to prove that that creates better lifetime value, a more engaged consumer, yeah. um, and, and a happier consumer that will come to your brand more often. Okay. And Looking into the future a bit, do you have any visions of how online shopping will evolve, like what new technologies will come into play or are already coming into play which retailers should, should set up and take notice of? Yes, so um, f for me it's kind of a step back in time. If you think about how people um, uh, bought clothing, say in the late 1800s, they often had a very tailored um, uh, set of clothing. It was, it was made specifically for them. And then in, in terms of uh, moving towards modern day, it's become a lot more mass market. So 
uh, brands and, and uh, start to push on us this concept of size, mm -hmm. and we're graded according to the sizes that are, that are available. I believe in the future it's almost going to go full circle, where there's going to be opportunities for consumers to have a more tailored, personalized service again. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and through uh, the, the kind of um, uh, using social networks and other tools, we'll be able to almost self cluster with other consumers of similar preferences or sizes or body shapes and then work and buy from brands a more tailored product. Okay. And we were talking earlier about um, searching for imagery. Do you think there's things like that you can, the way is search changing and is that going to play into the whole shopping experience? Absolutely. I think um, the, uh, we've barely scratched the surface in what's possible with search at the moment either through image recognition um, or through um, uh, the way that um, uh, products are kind of categorized or have attributes and tags that allow consumers to have a richer search experience. We're right at the forefront of that, especially when you think of augmented reality, virtual reality and things like that. And then in terms of the technology supporting that, you've got machine learning and artificial intelligence that can offer that more um, personal and bespoke experience for the consumer. Yeah, okay. Basil real hot topics, aren't they, the whole machine learning, art, artificial intelligence, VR. Is there anyone in particular you're particularly excited about? Is there one which you think will, which, which is most important to the fashion retail industry? It's putting you on the spot a bit, but... <laughs> so. um, not necessarily. I think, I think it's specifically virtual reality is very um, early stages. I have mm -hmm. seen a number of um, augmented reality um, solutions being put into store to engage consumers. For example, around um, the, the fitting room experience is starting to be um, improved through some augmented reality. But I think as the technology is still relatively early, as, it, as is consumer adoption, we're right at the beginning in terms of what kind of customer yeah. experience is. Okay. But, but we pioneered the concept of virtual fitting rooms um, about six years ago. Um, I, I see that the future versions of our virtual fitting room will absolutely be tied to, to virtual fitting rooms and aug augmented reality. Sure. And with all this data at people's fingertips and it being fed into algorithms and you're getting more and more personalization, have you got any views on how you keep the whole um, discoverability elements, like discovering new things rather, rather than always being just having stuff? I think it's quite quite hard to now discover new clothes you might not have otherwise shopped for. Have you got any views on that? Yeah, I think that's inherently what we help consumers do. I yeah. think there's two aspects to it. One, you might arrive at a, a brand's website and then need to find something that fits you and makes you look good that you really love. And we help improve that experience. And that's certainly what kind of recommendations and personalization engines are doing. But there's also another component to that, which is all about the search and discovery piece. Um, so quite often we're working on site at the moment with, mm. with brands and merchants, yeah. and we're starting to look at in-store. But in the future, I can see us absolutely starting to work through, say, affiliate channels and display advertising, where we help consumers find attractive brands that we know meets their preferences. So moving from on-site to off-site is, is a key okay. kind of component of our future. Sure, brilliant. Okay, well, thanks for your time, Stuart. It's been fascinating. <laughs>